How do you make a snooker table laugh? Uh, I don't know. You put your hand down his pockets and tickle his balls. That was shocking, isn't it? <laughs> you put me on the spot. Podcast. 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 Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. And thank you to, to Meditations for the Anxious Mind, who was here last week. Um, namaste, brother. But I'm delighted and, and excited. Really, genuinely really excited. Not that I'm not. Like, I, I, I've had so many incredible guests on. But, but for someone who I've, I've been listening to since... Since the, let, let, me, let me choose. Sorry, I, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Going. You're getting flustered. I'm getting flustered. Uh, delighted to be welcomed by one half of I'm Grand Man, Kevin Toomey. How are you? I'm very well, Pat. How are you doing yourself? You're such a charmer. Thank you very much. Well, it says, it says himself. Oh, you think I'm charming? Yeah. Not at you. Stop. And you're getting all dolled up. I feel like we're on a date. It's very intimate. Well, this is like I, this is like my 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 work attire. Like I wear shorts. The, the GA shorts. I love it. Um, I've the sliders on. I've the odd socks. I have the sliders on as well. Which ones do you have? Oh no, yeah, yeah. Nike, yeah. I'm kind of a Nike fan of myself. I'm I'm two for one in Adidas, so I wasn't really. <laughs> I, I was more whatever's cheapest. But I, I religiously, I religiously wear these everywhere, all around the house. Really? If I'm driving, because it's illegal to drive in sliders, so I have to put shoes on. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I've never driven a car before, but I'd say. Wearing sliders makes it a bit more difficult to be. Yeah, so but yeah. I wear them all, all around the house. Like they, this is all like shorts. I haven't wear a pair of jeans in so long unless I'm meeting someone. Like if I'm going for a walk now, it is it's as if I am going on a full night out. I'm there doing the <laughs> hair, like properly putting on my skin routine, um, getting getting and then I'm like, oh, oh, right. And then I meet my friend for a fucking walk for a coffee just to walk. I know, home. that's the way it is. Speaking of skin routine, can we take a moment? Glowing. Thank you. Thank you. What's Henry? I have to now. I don't know much about skin at all. I'm I'm not one. I just yeah. last last year I was like I need to. I would like to have clearer skin. I would like to. Yeah. So I called the sister down. I said, "Tori, come here." I was like, "I need I need stuff." It was like it was like something from a, a film. <laughs> it was like you know like I'm, I'm trying to think of a film where where um oh, there's a film in, in my head. Oh, what's what's the film where it's the girl and she has a complete transformation and the boy f- um, says that he'll bring her to prom and everyone's like oh, every no. other American teen movie I'm thinking kind of um, bring it on vibes I don't know why but like the side character and then the sister helps him out with the yeah yeah so so Tori so Tori comes down and she takes the laptop and and then she like she started typing things in and then she just kind of looked at me and said how much do you want to spend. And like, listen, it was lockdown one. And I was like, to be honest, I have a bit of money there. Like, don't break the bank. I'm not taking a mortgage out. I don't. Yeah, of course. She said, that's fine. That's fine. And then like progressively, you know, throughout the week, I just got these deliveries from 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 The Ordinary, from Keel. Yeah, they're a good one. What, what else do I have? Uh, Inky List. Um, and, and now, and, and then like, I've, I've had one or two friends over, like since I've moved back up to Dublin. And like, I've had one or two friends over um, pre-lockdown, of course. And you know they come up and and I had, a, I had a lady friend over once and she mm. she, she looked at my basket she goes you, you have better fucking skin routine than me. <laughs> but if you're rocking keels in the ordinary, I mean they're not they're kind of like mid range aren't they? They're like expensive enough. Yeah, I, I like I've no idea what they do. I just follow yeah. the instructions. Set with my sister, it's like it's like Shane with the instructions for the tech. <laughs> that's that's me with my sister and 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 the skin. But regardless, how are you? How how is all? You're back in London. Back in London, I'm back two weeks, um, and you know what? Over here now at the moment, everything's starting to open up. Hence why I'm in the gym rig out at the moment. I'm not sponsored by Under Armour, though. Under Armour. <laughs> if you're listening. If you're listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have been doing a few push-ups at home in my home workout. Um, so I'm kind of buzzing about that. I'm back to work this week. I'm working in the gym myself as well. So reception, not as like a PT or anything. And I do. I teach spin classes as well. They're back next month. Um, and I'm just kind of buzzing about being back. And I've been, was home in Ireland the last three months. And it was actually, you know what? It was lovely, especially because yeah, I had spent no time home last year. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what was it like being home? Because we were home for, for a substantial amount of time. But like, you know, it's, it's- Yeah, I was meant to be home for two weeks initially. And I was meant to fly back in the first week of January. Obviously, whole world went into lockdown and again. Um, and you know what? It wasn't awful. Obviously, I was like sharing a room with my brother. So like, 
and he's in his 30s and it was a bunk bed and I was like, not ideal. Very kind of Irish college vibes, Tick Helen, you know. It's so Irish as well though, isn't it's it? so bloody Irish and it's like, he was working in the bedroom then, um, he's working from home like all day. My other brother was like working downstairs. So like, I literally like just used to go out for walks with my mom like during the day and stuff. And it was nice in that sense because I mean, I moved away in 2014 and it was the longest I spent at home since. So it was nice just kind of because I'm like, oh, that's never probably going to happen again in my life. No, I could do. I could have a nervous breakdown and be like, mom, I'm moving home. I can't deal with the anxiety of living in London. And in a big... I, just missed the, I missed the bunk bed so much. I just had to. I, <laughs> I missed the bloody bunk beds. But like all in all, you know what? It actually wasn't terrible. And it was nice because even last year when we were in lockdown and living in London, and even though I wasn't working, I was furloughed and stuff. I mean, I still had the podcast to be tipping away at, but mm. I still f- found it really tough to like just switch off and be like, I felt like this, like, and I'm, I'm sure this is true for other people, not just for people like living in a big city, but like I, I felt like this constant need to be productive. And like every day I'd wake up and see PJ was working from home most days and he'd come down and he'd have like a morning's work done. And I'd begin out the bed at half 11 now. And I was just kind of thinking, Jesus Christ, I'm a waste of fucking space. <laughs> but I mean, I never ask, can I curse on this? You can of course. I Good. love that, that. Every single episode, every time there's a guest at the very time, and usually they don't curse for like the first five to 10 minutes. And the yeah. same they curse, it's the same reaction every time. Oh, can, can I curse on this? Sorry, is that okay to do? And then when they yeah. say, thank God, right. Fuck. But the floodgates have opened for me then now I'm going to be, no, I'm not, I'm not too bad. But, um, yeah, so I just kind of felt like I was doing everything. I was like trying to learn Spanish. I was doing yo- like I was doing yoga every day of the week and I was doing it out in our roof and I was like, who the fuck do I think I am? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then when I went home and like everyone else was just kind of taking a handy and like my mom wasn't back at work because she, um, she works in a school and obviously schools were off. So I was like, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go for my walks, have my coffees, and take a handy, watch a few Netflix series, read a few books. And it was actually, you know what? It was lovely. Now, also, there was a bit at the end when I was beginning to resent the entire thing. And I was like, my mom was like, do you need to go back? Like, you're not back for work for another three weeks. And I was kind of going, the way I said it to her was, I need to leave the party while it's still, a, a, like, a small bit fun. Because I said, if the novelty wears off completely, I said, I'll never be back to Cork again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I was no, like, no. I'm going to leave. And you know what? I've been buzzing since I came back. It's just been, it's just been nice. And to be fair, you're in like in comparison to being in Ireland, like we I, I probably have more likelihood of winning the lotto than getting a fucking vaccine at this stage. I don't remember what the mm-hmm. inside of a pub smells like or looks like. I I, yeah. I, there's, I I haven't showered for three weeks just so I could smell, just so I could get, get a reminder of yeah. the pub. I actually have showered. I showered this morning just in case people are wondering. Um, but like you're, you're in London where, where obviously you have a roadmap. Things yeah, like, you, you you seem to be doing something right in terms of the government. Obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of it, and not that. Oh Jesus, your guess is as good as mine. But like you're opening, pubs are opening back up soon, aren't they? Everything sort of. So it's from today, literally from today, you can have a booking in a pub. Now it's all outdoor, so any gaff that has an outdoor seating area or whatever. But like everywhere is kind of doing it. We're living near Hackney Wick, which is like down by the canal, so. It's a lot of like outdoor things anyway before any pandemic. So um, it is nice. I mean, I felt so guilty being home and like, you know, there was friends I was like chatting to and stuff. And every time there was like another announcement on TV and kind of Ireland still kind of seemed to be like not have a clue kind of what was going on. And then England were kind of steaming ahead with the vaccines. I was kind of like, obviously, I'm not a Brit. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify that. <laughs> Guys, caveat, have, I'm not British. You have the, such a strong cork act. I don't think for a second anyone's like, Guys, hey, this lad might be fucking, might be, might be a British. I, I don't know. I can... Public service announcement. I'm not from the UK, but um, but I, like there was this guilt because I was like, every time the British government announced something like positive, I was buzzing. You know what I mean? And I was kind of, yeah, yeah. so it felt a bit weird whilst all my like Irish friends who obviously can't just feck off to London or whatever, were kind of like, you know what I mean? I, there was a bit of, like, I felt a bit guilty, like, but now I don't, no, sorry. You know I was I mean? just going to say, I was before you just said there, I was going to say, John, don't. Like, no. I, I, I hate seeing my friends in Australia. I genuinely yeah. do hate. Now, like, I don't mean this, but there's a part of me that's like, geez, they could do another bushfire just to put them back in their place. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I'm not saying you can't say that. It was terrible. It was terrible. But I you know. know it would shut them up. No, I'm messing. Obviously, yeah. But, like, I'm also still like you know they have. They were over there. They got obviously got over there before the pandemic hit. They have. They they they're 
you know, more power to them, I guess. In, in the most yeah. Ways. Like, they're dead fucking right. Fair enough, I'll sit here and I'll be complaining. But that's just because I'm jealous. It's not yeah. because I actually don't want them to have fun. It's because I'm... Of course, yeah. Myself. And that's it. So you have every right to go, I think you should you should start putting up stories, being like, hey, bitches back in Ireland, guess where I am, a pub. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do that. Like, even going back to the gym now today, I'm like, do I? Because I kind of, like, you know, there's that thing of, like, being first day back at the gym and I kind of want the lads... I kind of want the lads in London to know I'm back as well. And I want to be taking a gym pick and I want people to think, oh, he's kind of he's back on it. You know what I mean? But I'm yeah, kind of yeah. like, then would it be kind of kicking the teeth of everyone back home? But also I'm like, I don't know. I just feel with all the Australian people because I have friends over there as well. I'm kind of like, I just think mute. You know what I mean? Mute for the mental health. Mute for the mental health. That's that's a new ad campaign. <laughs> It just sounds like it's the kind of like obviously the, the premise of this to mute Instagram, but it sounds like don't speak up. Don't, oh, <laughs> fuck it does, yeah. We might have to take another look at the copy, but um, you you get the you get the concept. I'm supporting mute for the mental health. Mute <laughs> for mental health. Don't say a word. Oh, uh, but but. It, Let's talk about like you, you, you're, you're t- oh, sorry. I, I had a quick anecdote there when you mentioned yoga. Uh, I, I've never done yoga. My sister is big into yoga. Um, Can I just say you look like you do yoga? I don't. I do a lot. I do running. I, I run a lot. I think running's. I, I think I've gotten really into recently, um, in the last couple of months. Like, I wasn't saying from a physical perspective. I was thinking more along the lines of the long hair and the funky shirts. Fuck! I really. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just said funky. By the way. I can't believe I'm that narcissistic. <laughs> no, like in a good way, you look like a, like a chill I, I, yoga person, makes, 420 vibes. It makes way more sense now that when you when you pointed out to me. Here I am. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been running a lot. I well, I have been running, Kevin. I have been running. Thanks for, for noticing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I try. I went to do yoga once. I met my, my, one of my best friends, Anya, uh, who's also another massive fan of, of your podcast. So Shout out to Anya. Anya, you're a legend. Uh, make Shout out to all the girlies. But she, so it was just before lockdown last year, you know, things were just normal. There was no whiff of a COVID. No one knew what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and Anya said, you know, we'll meet up. We'll, we'll go gym together because you're both part of Fly Fit Gym at the time. Yeah. Um, I've since upped my game to Westwood Gym, you know, pool gym, you know. I'm going, oh, pool. I know, I know. It's, it's, He's not missing a bounce. I tell you, it's unreal. It's so nice. I, and reason being, another side note, is because... Sometimes I don't want to go to the gym well, when it was open. I would go to the pool. Yeah. But then once I'm in there, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll do something. Yeah, of course. So it's, it's that kind of like an incentive. Anyways, uh, yeah. I, was part, I was part of Fly Fit at the time. And, and uh, oh, I was also part of Fly Fit. And you can roam all the different ones. And I, she said, listen, we'll go to yoga one day. And I was like, grand, my first ever yeah. yoga, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And she said, meet me at Dundrum, Fly Fit or whatever, whatever. She's going to do two sessions of yoga. So from seven to nine. And I said, um, oh, grand, yeah, perfect. She's like, I don't take my phone with me, though, so meet me at the 8 o'clock session in Dundrum. I said, okay. perfect, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'll meet you there. And I arrived at about half seven, maybe a quarter or two. Um, I, I, I thought I'd get, like, a few, like, bicep curls in before I went into the session. <laughs> Like, you know, you know, so you're looking on. swollen before your yoga session. Exactly, search. exactly. And uh, I arrived, and I, I went up to the room to like the yoga, the studio, and like, there was no, there was no sign of Anya. And I was like, I wonder where she is. And, like, I'm not, not going to go in there by myself. Couldn't find her. Went to the next yoga studio. She wasn't there. I was like, right, do you know what? I'll just go down and go do a normal hour session, and then meet her afterwards. And because I just couldn't find her, and I wasn't going to go in without her. But I went downstairs. There was another studio, and I was like, oh, she must be in this one. And it was five past eight, so the session had started. So I came in, and the instructor was like, are you coming in? I was like, yeah, sorry, sorry, I came in. I was like, I'll find Anya in here during the session. But it wasn't a fucking yoga session. It was an hour uh, army boot camp session. Oh, I thought and you were going to say Zumba. No, 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 way worse. So I, I was expecting to be like Zen. I was expecting to do this like... And then 40 <laughs> minutes later, I had this woman, come on, one more! And I'm like, this, this, <laughs> isn't, this just isn't yoga, is it? Uh, so I've never done yoga ever since. I've yet to do my first ever yoga session. You've yet to do it? Yeah, yet to do my first ever You know yoga. what? I hate being one of those wankers being like, oh my God, yoga is such like, honestly, it's such a vibe, like really like calms me out and it's like just so good for the mind and body. Honestly, yoga <laughs> is a scream. It's actually so, like, so uh, before this pandemic, like when I, I uh, was teaching spin classes, right? And I was teaching maybe like five classes a week. And on a Sunday, I used to, it was the only day like that I taught um, two classes back to back. And afterwards, I used to go. There was a yoga studio around the corner that my friend worked in. Pure bougie gaff. 
Um, but I didn't have to pay because he like worked front of house there. So mm-hmm. it's getting me in for free. And it's called Yin, right? This, everyone listen up because I'm giving you a good bit of info here if you are yet to try yoga. Yin is like a meditative yoga. So there's obviously like yin and yang side of things, right? And yin, like, so yang would be like the um, vinyasa flow type like yoga, but that's kind of, it's a bit more like physically like demanding, right? Whereas yin is you hold the postures for like three to five minutes, right? Now, they're not postures where you're standing, you have your leg up above your head kind of thing. Yeah, that's they're what I was thinking. Yeah. They're all very like you're, you're getting some child's pose in there. You're getting okay. pigeon. Very. And honestly, it's just you become new and you'll be feeling unbelievable after it. And as well, like people have said, I don't know why I said people, because that could be anyone. But it is said in the yoga realm, yoga people have said that so. <laughs> That's like, do you know when you go to say something? Like, oh, yeah, people, I've heard, <laughs> like, I've, but, like, no one said it. It's just like you're. you're it's cool. It's a, I, I learned it in a TikTok. But yeah. people have said, it's said that um, you're only as young, not as you feel, you're as young as your spine is, which, like, yoga is all about, like, a lot of it's based around, like, the spine and, like, flexibility of the spine and looking after, like, back, right? Honestly, yoga is game changer. I, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to make, I'll, I'll make like a, a resolution. Or I'm, does that make sense? It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to do a yoga session and then, and then I'll let you know how it goes. But no, my fucking look, I'll probably end up in another boot camp somewhere in the middle of like. Do you know what? The apps Down Dog is a good one, right? Last it on, you select like how long you want to do your yoga session for, thirty minutes. So you now if you're feeling kind of particularly tight in the hamstrings or whatever, you can like choose an area of focus, sit down, lovely kind of voiceover situation, American one, not too annoying, very kind of calming. Honestly, what's, nothing what's better. Down dog. What about up dog? Uh, what's up dog? <laughs> that was good. That was, he, he got it. He got it. You, you knew where I was going with that. Uh, but I want because you talk about. I want, I, I want to go into, you know, the, the journey of I'm Grandmam and, and how it nice. started and how yourself and PJ met. Um, yes. so where, 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 start from the beginning, you met at, because I, 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 I've, I've read, I've read the stories, I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard you know, but you met at UCC, am I right? He, he was in teaching yeah. classes and that's how, but for those who don't know, how would you describe it, explain it? So, um, I went to UCC, I was studying commerce with French when I finished the leaving cert, I kind of went into that. And do you still uh, speak French by the way? Are you still like we? Oh, wow. I, do, I, do, I just think it's pure like when people it's just like it's like that, even though like my Irish should be fairly good as well. And people are like, oh my god, you speak Irish, and you kind of don't know what to say to them, and you're just kind of like you reel off the air nahar, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, it's well, kind of like the same in French, but it's so funny because even though like I said at university, I reel off something that I like this big paragraph that I learned off from my French oral about fashion. <laughs> I always just go into Ilia, but coup de speculation, sujet du monde de la mode. Basically, my like friend who was like really good at French, like gave me this whole paragraph. And because like the person who was examining me was like a she's like a female, um, she was just and I went to like an all lad school. She was just obsessed because I say all the lads were going in. They were they were like, yeah, j'aime la musique, je joue le foot avec une équipe. And here was I going. Yeah, like I was going on about like um, modeling, like the downside to the modeling industry, fashion and like fast fashion. I'd say one was just like, oh, eating it up. You know what I mean? I'm going to turn my phone on airplane because I'm getting WhatsApp through to the breath, main. A, bre- a breath of fresh air, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> so I was studying commerce with French out in UCC. PJ happened to be uh, teaching hip hop in the dance society, right? And I'm not very hip hop. Though I might look quite hip hop, I know I have the kind of urban look about me. I'm kind of more jazzy, musical theatre, contemporary vibes, right? So I was with the Jazz Society, and we had done um, Interversities, and we—I think we actually where did we go? To? I think it was in UCD. We did it. Um, oh, I know. I the DCU dance, and they know this well. Are were were my favourite society by the time I was leaving. Just yeah. more because, like, obviously, I was in part of other societies that I like. An actress was probably my favourite society in terms of it was social enterprise. I love the people. Yeah. Just the crack with DCU dance you'd have. It was just you go out every every song is a fucking dance off. You get tired. Yeah. It's a workout. Yeah. You're like, girls, fuck off. Like I can't. Just leave me alone for five minutes. Honestly, you know, it's a, the dancing, not like they were. You know, <laughs> just girls, leave me alone. Stop, girls. Give a boy a break. Um, but even we went off to the universities and afterwards, like like we were going out and um 
I don't know what club we went in Dublin, but it was like something from Step Up. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And all the different like colleges were like dancing against each other. But um, we did interversities and PJ had choreographed the hip hop squad's interversity piece. And I was like, okay, that was unreal. So I was like, I'm going to have to get in on this, right? Um, so ended up taking one of his classes and I was like, love Dave. And he was also teaching another class, like a drop-in class, like outside of the university in uh, Shannon Street in the karate club there. I don't know why I'm telling you these minute details, but it was a karate club by day and a dance school by night. Um, <laughs> but I was doing it. And so he had been accepted to go to dance college over here in London, a place called Ardang. And like fees over here, because they're all like private institutions are quite expensive. So he was having a fundraiser, um, to raise money to help go towards his fees. And he was like, will you, um, because he had like the different dance classes that he was teaching, he had them like performing at it. And then he was like to me, he was like, will you do the MC for it? And I was like, what? And he was like, go on. And he was like, you're a laugh or whatever. And you'd be well up for it. And I was like, oh, I don't know any of your friends, like a lot of your friends and family and stuff, will they but get it? Anyway, it was a hit, went off seamlessly. We raised, I essentially got PJ the money to go and study. I'm the reason he's over here living the dream. But um, so it kind of just kicked off from there. And then I actually subsequently ended up dropping out of UCC to um, come over here as well. I kind of, it was kind of when I was at college that I was like, and I kind of, I'm like a huge nerd. And I was like, I was like constantly in the library, like doing my like um, extra reading, all that kind of jazz. And well, you're doing the extra reading and everything. I say that, but did I really? I probably did. I, I, don't know, I was just kind of, I was very taken by the like university like life, and I was kind of like, I don't know. And see, when I was in like my first three months, I ended up um, on my very first class party. We were going into it was called the Roxy at the time, and I don't know, I was locked and I wasn't being left in, and so I tried to go around the back of the bouncer and I tried hopping over the barrier and I landed flat on my face and knocked out my two front teeth. So I'm going around UCC campus like when I'm meant to be in my prime, and everyone's like riding everyone, and I'm going around with. Like, and I couldn't afford to get them done at the start. You know what I mean? Like, college is obviously expensive. So I went around for about a month and a half with nothing. And I say people were like, who is this poor misfortunate? So I think I just hid in the library for that period because I was like, it's just a safer space. You know what I mean? Anyway, they probably got onto the teeth. They always end up coming up in interviews. If I, listen, I'm, you're, I listen, you're talking, you're preaching to the choir there. I've, this is my third year of brace. I had them back in TY. I have to get them again. I have to get my whole jaw restructured. I have to get the whole operation. It's, it's, Don't let them touch that jaw. That's a moneymaker jaw. I have to. I, otherwise, I'll have no teeth by the time I'm 50. My, my gums are receding so much. I have to get it done because I keep getting like gum Christ. disease. So yes, it's you changed your tune quick there, didn't yeah. you? Maybe <laughs> do get the jaw done. <laughs> get it done now, actually. I'm just saying I like it aesthetically, whatever is going on mechanically Thank and you. inside the mouth. <laughs> I think from an aesthetics perspective, it's a okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, so PJ ended up going over here. I ended up um coming over the year after, but um we actually didn't actually uh speak a whole lot for those first three years mm. um, in the sense that we were both just kind of so caught up and we weren't like, I was actually outside of London. Different parts of the city, weren't you? Completely. PJ was like banging central. Um, and then it was only in my final year, PJ, PJ ended up like subsequently dropping in and he was kind of like just training like in, again, like kind of the drop in like dance classes situation. And it was my birthday and like, obviously I was like poor student and I was final year and I was like, that was around the time that I was really like, Jesus Christ, scraping the barrel. And it was my birthday and like none of my friends or my housemates like had money to do anything that weekend. And it was a Friday and PJ messaged me and he was like, he obviously had seen it on Facebook or something, whatever. And it's like, I'm guessing like at the time, I'm not sure. He might've known about it. Actually, he definitely, he doesn't know his own birthday. And he was like, what are you like? Happy birthday. What a laugh. Like, what are you getting up to for the day? And I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm actually, we're doing nothing. Like, to be honest, he was, I was like, I've no money. And he was like, and none of my friends have any money either. Hold another fundraiser. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I got an idea. <laughs> he goes, you get the trip together. You, will you MC? <laughs> like it was a hit the last time. Round two, here we go. Favor. <laughs> he goes, um, he was like, nah, affect that. He was like, come meet me in London. He goes, we'll go out anyway. So like, I hadn't been out with him like in three years. Right. Yeah. Went out that night, the two of us, and when I say we had a fucking scream, right? And as well because, so I was actually in Essex, was, is where my where I uh, studied. Can you do an Essex accent? 
Uh, you're some bastard for putting me on the spot like I know, I know. That, 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 that's the best. That's where you get the most authentic content. Is on right, the so I was living in Essex and a lot of the geezers speak like this. It's not too bad, but like... It's not bad. I, just, I, I thought you were going to prepare me. You just fucking went straight into it. I was like six months ago. <laughs> a one, two, three, but instead you just jumped. What's the, what's the one from Towie? Did you know Ireland ate a part of England Bay? Was it now that? Oh, I was actually, where I was like living is like, all where that was like, film like a lot of the nightclubs they went to was like over that end. But like, I thought when I moved to England, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be living my best gay life. Do you know what I mean? And I was yeah. like, I'm going to be, there's no gay clubs in Essex. Well, there's one and it's called Colours, but honestly, I went in there one night and I was fearing for my safety. I was like, what is this gaff? Um, so I hadn't really been like properly game clubbing like my whole time when I was like living over here. And I was like, I felt robbed. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, yeah. they sold me this dream. I was going to be kissing like gorgeous like Essex lads. Like, you know what I mean? And so then when I like when I was PJ and we went gay clubbing, I was like, okay, this is what I've like been this missing is, out on. Well, yeah, yeah, what you thought. This is, you know, this is the fantasy kind of situation. And just after that, I was kind of like, I mean, it's such a good weekend. I ended up staying like he had like a pullout coach in his house at the time in North London. And um, the next day, like he made me like vegan breakfast because he was vegan at the time with like Linda McCartney sausages and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, this vegan thing is like amazing. And I was like, oat milk? I've never heard of it. You know what I mean? And he was like opening my eyes to this side of London that like I wasn't even like aware existed. Um, <laughs> like oat milk wasn't specific to London. <laughs> Do you know what? Back in 2017, it wasn't a thing. Yeah, fair, fair enough, but it's not as if like they 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 kept it all. And uh, I'm pretty sure you could have you could have got it in Essex if you went looking for all maybe if I went venturing. But I didn't even know where to look. You know that was my issue. And so it's kind of from there. Then um, it was like the few weekends. Then kind of following that, I was like, um, he would just get on to me and be like, "How do, you f- do we feel about going out or whatever?" And I would just kind of like get the money together, get the train into London, and we'd kind of make it happen. And then I was doing my final year showcase. Uh, it was on in London and like, instead of traveling every day, like most people would like rent accommodation in the city, like just to, so they, that be like close to the theater just to yeah. make life easier. And um, I stayed on PJ's couch all that week and he came to like my grad show and stuff. And then when I graduated, I was like, everyone was like, um, a lot of the people who trained where I trained would actually live in Essex. So like there wasn't many like moving into London afterwards. And I kind of like, that was my intention. And he was like, well, why don't you move in with me for a bit, like for the summer and like, and then we can sort out like if we want to move into yeah. the accommodation then from them. So that's kind of how it started. And we just kind of, it was weird because like, it was kind of like we picked up exactly where we left off. But the, the difference being was that before we both came over to London, uh, neither of us were out. And it was actually only, um, the PJ had just moved over and he came back that Christmas and his birthday is like New Year's Day. So we'd always have like a piss up in his uh, on New Year's. And how does he forget his birthday if it's New Year's Day? Well, in the sense, in, sorry, when I said people are probably thinking, what the heck is the first, the first, the easiest, but he forgets, <laughs> he forgets his, um, like to pre- prepare no, him. he forgot, he forgets his age. He honestly, anytime we were out one night, he hates when I tell this, but we were actually Victoria's Secret, who's a drag queen in Dublin. Not sure. Yeah. Um, she was doing a show in London with Miss Cracker and she invited us to it. And we met her at half time and she went, um, she was like, lads, how are we getting on? And she was all dolled up in uh, drag and like, she looked amazing. We had been chatting to her for a while. It was our first time actually meeting her. And I'd say PJ was just like, I was overwhelmed myself. I was like, oh my God, this is like this tall, gorgeous woman like sat in front of us. And also she was like incredibly witty as well. And she just went, what age are you again, PJ? Like you're, and he went, um, I'm, I'm 23. And I was like this, and I was kind of looking, I was like, like he was 27, right? And I was like, <laughs> trying to make out that he's younger than he is, but I just, and I was like, I goes, PJ, no, you're not. And he goes, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm 24. And I was like, I goes, you're 27. And I couldn't stop laughing. Then I was like, I just thought it was the funniest thing. And he ought like, and it even happened, we were doing another interview and he was doing something and he was like, yeah, he was like, I'm 27 now. And I was like, you're 28, Dan. I was like, your birthday's in. Fair enough, like it was a lockdown birthday, but at the same time. Um, but yeah, that was kind of how it all sparked again. But like, it was literally like, we picked up where we left off, only we were having more of a scream because yeah. we were both out and proud, thanks, living our best life. And when, so when did the, uh, the, the podcast idea come? Because you were kind of turning around for a while, weren't you? Before you actually went in. Yeah, so we, so we moved in together. 
it was actually I'd actually gone off dancing on a cruise for six months around Asia. <laughs> nice. In 2017, got back early 2018, and then we went about moving into like a. What's that like? Actually, sorry. What's what are those like? Because I've I've heard people who have like worked on them and it's a six months and 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 it's meant to be class. But you know what? They are a class, right? And they are a scream. I just so I uh, just happened to be unfortunate with regard to. Basically, we had so I was like a production dancer, and we have you have like a dance captain who is essentially like looks after the shows because obviously the choreographer is not going to go traveling around Asia with you or whatever. The yeah, director yeah. Saw. <clears throat> so happened, <laughs> I'm not going to name names, she was a bit tapped, right? So, uh, I went on, I actually so the cast that I was with, their contract ended up being extended by a further six months, and the fella that I replaced, he had already had another contract like uh, agreed back in London. So he couldn't extend. So I basically was the only new dancer going on. Right. So myself and there was another production dancer, uh, fella named Sam. He ended up getting injured when I, w- so basically I had all these shows to learn in the space of about two weeks whilst on this fucking ship in the middle of the yeah. East Asian Ocean. I don't know if it was East Asia, by the way, I don't know where I was. Um, but we can, we take that bit out so people think I'm knowledgeable. <laughs> We're out learned, bearing in mind, like, and I, <clears throat> all those first two weeks like I'm struggling with being like like the food and like the even like getting used to like like dancing on a ship you know what I mean and like yeah. I was getting see I didn't think I'd be affected by seasickness like um naively because I had gotten the ferry to Brittany before when in my youth and I was like that was fine <laughs> and then so I was like having to get used to all this and I was like nah this is way too much and it was just a lot like and any like any uh, like dancers going on a cruise there is like an awful lot to learn typically you'll have to learn like two shows um, that you can perform in alternating nights because obviously if people are going on a cruise for a week they're not going to watch the same show every night of the week so yeah. there's like a lot to learn and um, there's a lot how, many, being, how many people are on it's like a, a whole thousand I think my, uh, my fleet was this I want to say 8,000 it's a lot it is a lot like and it's yeah it, it's a lot like and I think there was something like I think it was like a thousand crew then as well but um I remember being like, I can't hack this at all. And it was my first job as well, like that I like, graduated and was kind of thrown into the deep end. It was good in a sense because it was great from like a learning perspective. Mm. But I remember being like, I'd made such a fuss about going over there as well. And I was like, you know, and I did the whole Facebook status at the time and being like, see you guys just going to kickball change my way around Asia for a few months. See you when I get back. And I did like, I don't know, like a, I probably had Googled like the Chinese for like goodbye or whatever. And so you got like probably like a hundred and two hundred and loads of comments like best of luck, best of luck. All that kind of jazz. And then yeah. I got my like because we had to wear like a name badge whilst we were on the ship and like they gave it to me and my name was like spelled out in uh Mandarin. And I was like, I like I uploaded a picture of that and I was like, <laughs> if you ever were wondering how to spell my name in Chinese, this is it, you know, all that kind of thing. But I remember being over there and I was like, I can't hack this, and I was like, how but I like the reason I did it primarily was because like it's a good way to save money. Obviously, you're not you're like kind of seeing the world your like bread and board is like you're put up so you don't have to spend yeah. money really unless you want to like buy bits when you're over there so I was like it'll be good to like save for like um just to put towards like a deposit for like renting a gaff when I come back to London that was kind of my intention and I remember being like I need this money and I was like but I can't actually hack this and I was like I don't know if I can I'm going to be able for it so I was like but there was a thing in my contract like, that if you were injured like you'd still be paid <laughs> And I was, I remember at one point thinking, no, this obviously, your, your, foot, your, foot, your foot in the door just poof, off. Or, but no, but literally, I was like, oh, I'm just going to fuck myself down these stairs. Like, they did a big spiral <laughs> staircase, staircase in the atrium, like, of the, like, the, like, foyer or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to, like, just take a hopper. <laughs> does, 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 you could have gone for something more subtle, but you're like, I love it. You're like, the stairs. But the how the glamorous. Stairs, the, 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 the spiral stairs. That is With the chandelier in the grand foyer. <laughs> It was like an uh, uh, version of Cluedo, but I was like, I'm gonna have to do it. It's like it's like Titanic if it, if it, if it went wrong, which is coming down the stairs. <laughs> just tell me that. I just like, <laughs> just lean out of the car. was like, oh no, Jesus, she actually fell there. Anyway, sorry, I went on stage. Go on. Oh, so, um, yeah, I, had, I I ended up obviously kind of like loving it or whatever. And I got to, like I never had like any ambition to be like traveling around Asia or whatever. But I went to like. So Korea, we went to uh, Vietnam, we went to like Jeju Island and it's all because obviously they're all like coastal areas like because they're all ports for the ships. So it's all like, <clears throat> especially because so the home port was actually uh, Shenzhen. So it was like all Chinese passengers mostly. And um, we'd then like take them to Japan or to South Korea or Vietnam. And 
all those areas like because they're like all like kind of so we went to like Osaka, Okinawa, Sasebo. I do, I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm not sure if the, like some people will know where these places are, but they're all these like really cool like surf places and stuff. You sound and really like you know really like <clears throat> well traveled because like, you're like I do, don't I? You do. I'm like I'm, because I'm like a fucking no clue what he's on about, but just nod your head because like, I sound so like I never heard of these gaps either, or even like. Like even when we went to Vietnam, because that that wasn't on the initial itinerary, it kind of changed when we went over, and they were like, "Right, lads, we're going to Halong Bay, and uh, where else did we go? Like Da Nang and stuff." And we were all like mad. Like che- that's the only thing when you're on a fucking ship, you have to pay for the fucking Wi-Fi, even if you're working for it. So like you're literally kind of cut off in the world. You know what I mean? A small bit, yeah. and you don't want to be because it is expensive. You don't want to be spending all your money like. Like I top, I'd like top up the odd time and I like just to be sending WhatsApps to my family and stuff. But like, and then it's so funny because like you go to these like gorgeous ports and because the the gang that I was on with, this whole podcast is gonna be me on a fucking ship. PJ's <laughs> gonna be screaming because it's so funny because sometimes if we're like chatting the podcast, I might just come up and he's like, "You can't talk with the fucking crew." <laughs> and I'm like, I, I didn't mean to. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just thought, and he's like, "No, stop talking with the fucking crews." But here you are, free wearing PJ. PJ is yeah, exactly. PJ Fuck you, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's so funny because like, so we'd be going to these like gorgeous like locations, right? And like all the dancers, like we'd get off and literally they'd all like head to the nearest Starbucks just so they could you like use the Wi-Fi and like do whatever. And I remember thinking something's not right here. You know what I mean? I'd be like wearing these like. Just like stunning parents of the world that like, you know, most people would only ever dream of seeing. I don't know why I came out with that line, but no, no, it was but much like that. They were like, like gorgeous cities. And it's so funny because you just, and there's be a load of us like bammed out on beanbags, like in Japan. It was a lot. Japan, lads, Japan is, I feel like I'm very like, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I feel like Irish people and Japanese people would get on great. Very kind of like laid back, very like don't take themselves too seriously. I've never been. I, I meant to go, I was meant to go to Vietnam April last year, and of course, really, yeah, my cousin's over there at the moment, uh, and I was meant to go over and visit her, and unfortunately, COVID hit, and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't left since. I was just saying yeah. like how I, I'm on, I'm on a graduate program. It's an international graduate program, and oh. last year I was meant to go abroad as well. But like the grimness is, I joined an international graduate program to spend six months in my bedroom, which That's is crazy, isn't it? Which, 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 which is mad. It's insane. But the the podcast. So you came back. You you you're on, you're on the cruise ship. You you come back and then. <laughs> the, the, sorry, I actually got the ship for six quite. months. Um, got back and then so we were both kind of like auditioning for things. PJ's working for a creative advertising agency, mm. and in between it, we were both kind of going to like auditions and stuff. Um, I was just working in a restaurant part time, and we were kind of like we. We had this idea that we were going to start our own like gay club night because we were like, and it was kind of going to be like kind of Irish kind of themed. And we were like kind of, because like we love going out in London and stuff and East London like is great for like nights out and stuff. Um, And the scene in East London is really cool. Um, But we kind of wanted to bring the laugh and like the thing is we found that like in London, like a lot of people, lads, like, like take themselves a bit too seriously. It's all a bit serious. And like, even if you take a look, it's so funny because like if you were to go back to like, uh, some of these clubs they're like Facebook albums or their Instagram albums of like photos of the nights out you'll see like these like gorgeous lads wearing like harnesses or like vests and like you know gorgeous bronze oh, bodies and hair perfect and stuff and they're like literally look like models like in a club doing a photo shoot and then somewhere in the album you're like find me and PJ we're like like <laughs> locked like hair all over the gaff pouring in sweat my rosacea's going inky and we were like but like we had a scream like so we would like we liked the idea of like doing an Irish club night where we kind of brought the laugh and like, you know, the idea of like not taking ourselves too seriously. Yeah, like, the crack, the crack. That the you, crack. The you like, get from, be, from Cork and from, from that Irish That kind of thing. We basically yeah, yeah, wanted yeah. to bring that like to a club in London. So we were kind of looking at that and then we were like, yeah, let's fucking do it. And we were like, we know nobody. <laughs> so like, <laughs> even from like a publicity perspective or getting the word out there, we were like, we had all of like 800 followers probably each kind of thing. So we we're like, who's going to come? You know what I mean? And of yeah. that... Probably 750 were people who were living in Ireland who I'm sure, like, as much as they loved us, were going to be We're paying not going to get a flight over for, for a night out. As much as we sold it to them, it was never going to happen. So then we were kind of like, um, I don't know, the podcast idea kind of came to us because, as well, on top of that, we loved kind of hosting and we loved having uh, people over to the gaff and kind of entertaining and are like for free drinks now and stuff. And say now, like, if a friend brought a friend who had never met us, they'd be like, oh, come here, yeah, kind of, you're like a double act, the two of you kind of thing. And we we're like, 
yeah, we are. <laughs> like, we are. So that's kind of, then I kind of, I came back after Christmas. I'd been home and I was like, let's just like start a podcast. And then I had paid for him to go to Budapest. That sounds like he went by himself. Like, <laughs> We, we had our third fundraiser and at this stage we had really just then BJ, we'd, we'd really no milk way. this fundraiser thing we had to stop <laughs> at this stage but uh, it was his birthday and we, I like me and him were going over to Budapest basically and we got on a flight and it's so funny because we had to find it for something recently um, it was I found the uh, messenger chat that we had um, before we went uh, whilst we were on the flight let me bring it up there because it was, we were looking at it the other night and we were screaming there was actually, I remember, oh, I don't know if it's, it might still be on because I haven't thrilled. Do you know when you find, follow someone on Instagram and you go through their account, which I think is quite normal to do? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it, it's still there. The photo, it was at the Budapest Bats. And there's a photo yeah. Because I remember being like, because like, you're not, which which is great, you're not very showboating in terms of like your your fitness. And and, and I was like, this guy's fucking ripped. This lad is in a med show. I was like, Whoa. Uh, which, which because is- we were on the piss the night before so it was, it was, I was dehydrated to fuck <laughs> so you were like opportunity take it now I'm, I'm hungover but take it I look class get it now but um, I don't know yeah I don't know I, also it's all smoke and mirrors that kind of thing it's the pink speedos that sold it I think for people people <laughs> going this fella's confident Do you know what I mean? let me try and find it but anyway we had a conversation we were on the flight over and I can't I thought I was going to be able to find a screenshot but we were sitting separately and we kind of we were like we were like, we'll use this trip now to plan the thing. But we were like, in reality, was that even going to happen? Would we be too caught up with doing bits over? Mm. And then it's so funny because the message I sent him, I was like, where are you? I said, I'm next to this big, huge Hungarian fella. And I goes, I can't, I can barely breathe. And he goes, oh, he goes, I'm actually in the emergency exit. And I goes, well, is there a space three next to you? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'll ask your one there now. And then that was the end of the conversation. And I just <laughs> end up sitting next to him. We had a bottle of wine and we planned the whole first episode. Then we... We ordered the mic when we landed. And you came home with it, and then the rest, the rest is history. The rest is history. That's the way it happens, isn't it? Yeah. Which is really funny because, like, so I started, I started listening to your podcast, I think it was around, it, actually, I think <clears throat> the very first, so I listened to your podcast twice for the first time, we'd say, right? And this is this is kind of funny. Um, the first time I listened to it fully and then started listening to episodes would have been last year when you Paul Mescal on. Um, yeah. I was a huge fan of normal people in terms of... And I, I, like a lot of your podcasts, to be fair to you, you've no issue talking about serious issues um, or, or personal stories or personal yeah. experiences, but you do it in a way that's authentic and lighthearted. And I think that's what makes it so easy and at times so educational, which is great. And that, obviously you mentioned there, there's the crack that you have. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what just really sums it all up. And of course, your, your mother's advice at the end. Uh, but that's what b- brings it all together. And it's such a incredible, a great, great show, definitely. But I, so I was, I was, so, so let me, let me, let me praise you before I <laughs> go. <laughs> you couldn't understand the word first time round, is it? No, not that. So I was, list, I was, I was looking for podcasts to listen to. Um, and because I, 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 when I, when I started doing, doing this, the, 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 the podcast, I was, um, I just started listening to podcasts myself. So I, I didn't know many other podcasts and mm. I was looking for podcasts to listen to and to, Two of my friends were actually on the graduate program with me. Uh, uh, Rach, Rachel and Will had suggested, um, "Oh, you should listen to I'm Grandma." Now the two, the two of them are from Cork as well. So, so there's that. There's that. Shout out to Rachel and Will, my Cork family. Yeah. And and <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, Grant." Now I was incredibly hungover. I was on the way in, into into work. Or I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I was. I was. I was tired. It was. It was a mid December. Um, really bleak day, and you know those days where you're just like, I'm depressed. You know, yeah, you want, but you want to throw on sad music, like like you you want to throw on like yeah. Tony Mitchell. You want a good cathartic cry. Yeah, yeah, you want to, like, every Sunday, every out, Sunday out, night. Out the window, pretending you're in a music video. You know, hearing that someone boy. say action, and you're just like looking. So I was always like, oh, Rachel was like, listen to it on grandma. It's like grandma, so it's on. And I said, and I didn't know what it was. I did, I should have read the description. I, I should have prepared myself for what it was. And then I was and the first thing I was, hey girlies, and, and, it was, and I was like, this is fucking. And I was like, I am too, too tired, too, too depressed to be lifted up by the by these two. By these two gays. Charming, charismatic. <laughs> Gave it with a not only that with a cork accent. The cork accent was the part that was like, oh, it's so strong. And then and then. Uh, 
And then, of course, then I started listening to you, and and I, I fucking love you. Like, I, I think your podcast is ah, absolutely incredible. You're a gem. And and where like is this something you want? Because it probably is tough. Even like talking to PJ and and, and organizing this episode, like, is it tough to balance? Because I've struggled to do both my job and, and the podcast, and thankfully the podcast isn't near what 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 i'm grandma is so like and, and i i i always say this it's a bit of a cop out for me with my show because it's interviewing guests so the pressure is mostly on the guests once mm. i'm able to facilitate the questions or you know make them feel comfortable feel comfortable or have a good time but for you you know it's, it's a structured show so like is it difficult to to balance that like work life and, and keep it up because especially as much as your show grows and and in popularity and how, how your fan base grows um do, do you find are you able to manage it i mean it, it is like but i suppose with anything like that i suppose like the you might have to edit that big uh brain fire <laughs> thing i was trying to think and i was like we're like well, often like I suppose it is right. Like it is, it is tough to like find the balance, right? Yeah. And um, like especially when there's the two of us, because obviously, like PJ's doing his own thing, I'm doing my own thing. Um, it's probably good to have that as well. It's good to have your own. It is, yeah, completely. So you're not completely on top of each other all. The I time. mean, I suppose in the last year it was really when we probably like gained most momentum and have like uh, gained like. Uh, fairly sizable following like even though we like we were doing like pretty well before lockdown and stuff but i think uh lockdown really kind of propelled things and um it was tough like especially both of us living in the same gaff and kind of you know because before lockdown when we were both like going about doing our nine to fives and then we come back in the evening or we'd catch up on a friday when we had loads to catch up on especially so like last year when we were both kind of doing nothing and seeing each other like all day and then in the evening we'd be like right let's sit down and record this it was a bit of like a like a task or whatever but like ultimately i suppose <clears throat> what we do is it like not to diminish what we do and not to say like that it's like fucking easy either but like it is like having a chat with my best friend you know what i mean and we kind of um like there are times when we kind of are a bit allergic and they're like oh we've, we have to do this now and like get through this whatever 90 minutes of recording but it is tough but like we do like we do love it you know what i mean so it kind of when you love it it does make like make it easier and you kind of you make the time for it and kind of like there are uh there have been like times where we've been working literally like seven days and kind of we've had no weekend or we've cancelled plans like so that we could like prioritize the podcast and stuff but we kind of i don't think we've we'd have it any other way because even now especially going back to cork at christmas for three months and even going on my walks and it was kind of the first time it happened because it doesn't happen obviously that much over here. Like the majority of our listeners would be kind of Irish based, although it has happened to me on occasion here in London town. I have been spotted once or twice when I've been empty my bits. Um, but it was when I was home and like, I was just like, in the arena, that, like, for coffee. Like, like, me? I'm not, I'm not, oh, I'm grandmam. Is that what you, I actually, I, I told the story yesterday. There was a, I was going, it was during the summer and I was, we were at a, Camp. Sorry again. I keep going on tangents. For no, those work, I get them. really excited when, when, when people certainly who's on the podcast who I've um, been following for ages or, or listening to their stuff. I get quite over over excited and and I, like I start to like oh. get a hyper far too hyper. Anyways, fuck it. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So we we were we were at a campsite and uh, it was during the summer when everyone was traveling the west and we had just set up camp up the top of this campsite and we were in the reception and there was these two girls who came in and they were like, um, uh, oh, the receptionist was, was showing them where they were setting up their campsite and they were actually right beside us. Um, and I was like, oh, like, if you want, I'll get in the car with you and show you where you're going. Because it was a bit of a weird, it was, it was awkward to get around. And they were like, yeah, perfect. So I hopped in the car and when I got in the car, one of them kind of looks at me and goes, are you? And I thought, it was during the time where like, I was making like, TikToks and stuff, so like people had kind of kind of recognized me or like the podcast, and then I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm Podge from from TikTok, and then she goes, I was gonna say the graduate program, <laughs> and I was mortified, I was, and I took oh, nice. I to go the whole way, the rest of the way up to the campsite while I just sat there in the front seat, Brilliant. absolutely red, but uh, yeah, you sorry, you were saying you get rec you got recognized once in London town. Well, it was actually just since I got back, I was kind of cycling through Victoria Park and I was just like baiting along on my bike. And I actually probably looked like some dickhead because I'd like, I'd know I had the headphones and I was kind of going, whatever, taking a handy Sunday kind of Sunday stroll. Like, and um, uh, bike cycle up alongside me. And I like, I the thing is, right, in those situations, 
situations, I'm so easily startled anyway. And I'm the type of person, like even like if, if some like if PJ's like scaring me in the gaff or if like our other house McLaren like pops out. I and the thing is I can't I can't do like a huh, like I I scream like I literally am like <laughs> you know what I mean? And I can't I've never like before I used to try and like um like uh, reduce it down or try and like you know put on like a masculine scream or like if there's such a thing right but like I just can't I can't do it so anyway this bike cycle was on beside me and I had the headphones in and he just looked at me and went sorry and I went I nearly came off the bike and I was like and it was a lad as well and I wouldn't be used to like Lance approaching me and I was kind of like, oh, thinking oh does he want my number what's the crack am I looking unreal and he went um he was like sorry he was like uh are you Kevin and I went yeah whatever and he went um my girlfriend listens to your podcast it was uh, uh, did I say podcast there? <laughs> no, no, you said podcast. <laughs> That's your influence. He was like, my, my girlfriend listens to your podcast. He was like, but she's too embarrassed to come over. And I was like, well, send her over. And then we just had ended up having this chat. The thing is, as well, then like I can't just be like, oh, that's great. You listen. Uh, thanks for saying hi. Like I ended up chatting to her for I was chatting the year off her for about half an hour. And I'd say the two of them were like, why the fuck did we actually bother to stop him? Because he's such a dickhead. He ended up just chatting to us about his life for the last half an hour. <laughs> be an opposite though like if someone would, would be a dickhead who wouldn't take the time of like to, to, to I, well you are very you're very engaged with your fans as well though in terms of like getting them on the show and and, and like you know voice notes or or like you know your mom's doing the the advice the and like you're very engaged and you do seem incredibly appreciative and, and loving of those who listen to your podcast yeah completely i'm it's because it is that type of thing where we thought it was going to be friends listening and you know when the first episode went out I remember and we had like even when that like the first person tagged us who neither of us knew and like you know we weren't following them they weren't a friend of ours and we were like how is this random or listening and like people have been that's the thing like I, maybe it's an Irish thing I don't know but like people have been like so kind with regards to like messages they've been sending us or emails and stuff or like just taking the time out of their day to send us like this really long message and kind of going I mean, I am known for like sliding into a few, I'm not calling myself a celebrity, but I've f- slid into a few celebrities DMs and I kind of, you know, shy talk them a bit. But um, but people like just literally just send us the most loveliest messages and are really open and are like, lads, honestly. And like, even if they're just saying, lads, listen to the podcast, great stuff, like literally you cheered me up. It just does, like it does like make some difference. Cause like, so working in the gym there, like um, I usually start, like if I'm on the morning shift, I have to open up at half five. So I'd be up at half four. And I'd be on the train at five in o'clock. In the morning. In the morning, yeah. Just um That's horrendous. It's like, the city that, that never sleeps, Dal. The city that never sleeps, and neither do I. Are you sure um, it's London you're in? Because I'm pretty sure that's New York. <laughs> is, that, is that New York? That's, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's New York. Um, we're, in the, we're in the big apple now, Podge. <laughs> uh but I'd be on the train, I'd go into work and I'd be kind of like, you know, I'd be half asleep. And this is kind of when we just started off, and I'd go on to like or the Instagram page and I'd go into message requests and I'd just be on the train at five o'clock in the morning reading these messages from randomers like just being loving me I was kind of going this is actually like obviously like, it's a great fucking ego boost or whatever but it's nice it's, it's, it is it's, really nice as well yeah. do you know what I mean and even like we, so we yeah we're, we're massively appreciative because there's, there's a difference as well between like, like ego boosts you know you'd be coming out there being like I'm great whereas when you're like this is nice this is very heartwarming it's that's not really you're not being egocentric you're just really appreciating the people who as you said are taking the time out of the day yeah also I do feel unreal because I'm like <laughs> we got we got a great thing going here Kate. and you've done because you've done a few live shows speak you've done one in my stopping ground as well um DCU didn't you we did. Yeah. Uh, it was Ashley Fagan had us in. Can I say her surname? You, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Ashley will, will be delighted. She is. Every week, week for the show notes. Come here, one at Jim. Yeah, they had us in for their, I think they called their week. Is it Kiss Week? Keep it safe and sexy? Yes, well, I call because because Ashley took over from my mantle as the welfare officer in DCU. Yeah. And I think it was Shag Week for me. Uh, but yeah, I think they called it Kiss Week. Did they call it Kiss Week? I think so. It Don't was, call it was, me on that. It was changed. Anyway, um, it was their Sexual Health Awareness Week, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. So that kind of, condoms, etc. Yeah. And they had us in, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, we naps, honestly, doing it in the colleges, like, it was just such a scream, because I was like, even, so we did, like, kind of the same kind of thing in UCC for their Shag Week, and it was so weird, as, like, someone who had dropped out of UCC, and then I was going back, and, like, we were filling one of the lecture halls, to do our own show that we'd kind of just come up and we were talking about like 
Is there like a, when we talk about ego boost, is it like a <laughs> fuck you? I was, but well, it was so funny because I was like, to my dad, I was like, oh, I'll be home there now next weekend. And he was like, oh, what are you? He's like, you're coming back to say hello. My dad doesn't sound one bit like this, by the way. And I was like, no, we're actually, we're doing a show in UCC. Yeah. And it's, uh, and he was like, oh, brilliant. You know, because he was like, like, I mean, whatever about me being gay, he was traumatized when I dropped out of UCC to say that I was going over to fucking study musical theater. I'd say he was like, what? <laughs> it's happening with my life um, So it's nice Yeah like All the shows Like the live shows That we did like In the universities And stuff We did a few in Dublin We did one in London Here as well mm. Did some in Cork And, and is that like Is the podcast Or, or is it what you're doing Something that like You would hope to be Your full time career Something that you Would like to elevate To to a point where it, you, you wouldn't need a, a job You probably don't need A job at the moment Considering the, the growth That you have um, And like considering The amount of fucking Fundraisers you're able to do You could just fucking Do that every second week But no But in all seriousness is, is the podcast something That you would love to, to, to Yeah create? definitely I mean Because like It is something that we've created t- Together and like Like that was one of the reasons We started it as well Is because we're both Kind of creative people And we just found like Like if we ever were doing any other projects and if it was like, like someone else doing them, we like the idea of just being involved creatively in whatever we do. And like PJ comes as well from um, like social media background in the sense that, you know, like he does kind of social campaigns for um, a few brands like in London. And so that's like, if you take a look at our Instagram feed and like the way it's like kind of curated and stuff, he's kind of like (laughs) behind that and stuff. So like all of that, we're both like interested in like, like just doing something for ourselves and kind of building a brand up and kind of because that's what we like we see like it is the podcast but we see it as kind of like a brand and like um like the like the live shows because we both have like a background in like performance mm. like like I think people were kind of expecting us to be sitting down with a, like two chairs and like a table and like a cup of tea for our live shows but like it was all kind of we were doing dance routines we were doing kind of everything and we kind of yeah we kind of it's like whatever whatever we have an afternoon, doing, we're just kind of going to try and make it happen. You know what I mean? So yeah, the, I suppose the long-term goal would be to um, take it to like that next level. So that it's like a full-time thing, but also, I don't know, maybe if this is just for me, I'd say PJ doesn't have this issue as much, but especially being like a single man in London and like, if I'm chatting to fellas on Tinder and because as well, I'm not sh- like sure if you're aware of what, what this story is over there, but like every second gay fellow over here has their own podcast. So it's not even like, I never really? even... It's just a thing, like, it was like a thing in the last three years that everyone's just like, oh, yeah, I have a podcast or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just, And I just think it, not that it's cringe, because I'm not embarrassed that I do it. Like, I, like, I'm, like, so proud of, like, what we've achieved and stuff. But I do think there's something a bit wanky and, like, oh, yeah. So if someone goes, oh, so what do you do? Say now if I'm chanting to Valentino and he goes, oh, so what do you do? And I'm going, oh, I have a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just like you're, just, you're beating the same drum as well. Because you have it, like, and again, and not to, 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 to diminish anyone who has podcasts out there. Like, it's great. It's a great way to be creative. It's it's an incredibly new kind of content format that's certainly become more prominent in the last couple of, geez, in the last four years at, yeah, at, at most. But, you know, there's a lot of people who say, and I think it's the same with anything. They don't understand that there's a lot of work that kind of goes into it as well like you can't just say I'm going to do a podcast but too often I know so many just from a personal note of those who said I'm going to do a podcast they've made like one episode and yeah. they just they just end it so you don't want to be like I make a podcast because because you know the, the nine times not nine times out of ten but a lot of times a lot of the people who, who make a podcast have made one or two episodes and then quit it whereas you know and, but you also don't want to be like I make a podcast but it's really successful we've this many followers exactly there's, 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 like, there's that kind of like you don't know where to and also I don't want them going on listening and like because the thing is you're <laughs> <laughs> right like we are quite candid on the podcast like I fucking tell all you know what I mean it's, yeah. it's that thing like I struggle with because I'm just chatting to my best friend that I kind of don't have a filter like it's only sometimes when I'm doing like the edit and the post I'm like Jesus Christ do I want to be telling lads this so I'm like I hate the idea if I'm just chatting to a lad especially like if we're getting on well and we're chatting for a few days imagine if he used to go away and listen to my podcast and then we go on our first date like what are we going to fucking talk about he's going to be like well I know your life story so you, actually you could talk to him about your trip to <laughs> when you went to the cruise ship, you you haven't mentioned that yet, but you went to the cruise ship uh, around Southeast Asia. I can't. I never thought about that. That's actually a good angle for me. I could talk about the fact that I went on a cruise ship and don't really ever talk about it. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the first. That's the first. That's the first. I thing think I was saying to BJ because we were kind of planning the next season and stuff, and I was like, right, we need to do an episode on cruising, and I'm not sure. Like cruising over here is like you know, I think like like George Michael got done for cruising in Hampstead Heath. So it's like, whatever, lads going into like a public toilet or whatever and like looking to like ride or whatever. And he was like, he was like, 
we're not doing <laughs> an episode on cruising. And I was like, not fucking cruising with Jane McDonald. I was like, we want to do, I was like, cruising. Like, Topic, cruising, like yeah, cruising yeah. London. Um, so yeah. That might get the green light, Jess. Yeah, because I, I was, I would, you, you do seasons as well, which is something that I, I think I, I'm more consecutive weekly. But again, years there's much more planning and, and you have a whole brand behind it and, and it's, you know, doing doing so well. Do you have, before we wrap up, because this podcast has gone over, which I, I do love when they do go over because, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it shows that... It's a testament to my... It's a testament to your, your, your ability to talk. Abilities. And ability to converse it's a testament yeah. to, to converse but do you have a favorite moment um so far whether it be and not necessarily you just have to necessarily be within because i know for for your wrap-up you did talk about um for for last year's wrap-up for, sorry no, for, for your 50th episode wasn't it you done like your, your best bits so far yeah yeah yeah, 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 podcast. yeah but do you have a favorite moment whether it be on or off the podcast but that is part of the i'm grandmam journey um, that that you're like this this for me no matter how big or how small, um, um, you know what when we did when we did the live shows our first live show in London so mm-hmm. like even when we were planning to we were always aware of the fact that like our listener base was in Ireland um we knew there were people listening to us in London or whatever but we kind of just and like said on the podcast that we were going to do a show in London and we kind of felt like we had to follow through with it and we were kind of like would we even be able to fill a theatre, we ended up booking a theatre in East London called The Yard. The Yard? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Look, well, does his research, but we had done it there and um, it was kind of, because we were kind of just kind of living off adrenaline like that whole day because like, it was kind of first time we'd done anything like that and we didn't know how it was going to be received and like, whatever about us sitting down and um, having a chat. We just, you know, there was that like fear of like the unknown and like what way people were going to take it when we actually did live and like, so we we're kind of open and it was all our own doing and we kind of, and we were even like from like, like from a technical perspective and stuff, we were like, we've never had to worry about any of those things. You know what I mean? Mm. So I remember it was like when that show finished um, and everyone kind of stood up in the auditorium and bearing in mind, like, again, we still don't even know that many people in London. We'd about, I'd say you count on two hands, the amount of like personal friends we had there. And so everyone else was just a random and they were all standing. We were like, what? A fucking buzz and we were like we, it was just the fact that because I've obviously done shows and stuff before but um, I've, I'm a seasoned performer darling I've, I'm, <laughs> you name the show I've done it I've, I, was I, I was on a cruise ship I've done <laughs> I was it. on a cruise ship but and I was just, it was just that like it was just a really kind of unreal moment because it was just the fact that I was up there with my best friend doing it as well you know and it's for you as well. Like it's something you create. Like I mean, when you're dancing and and and, and you study musical theater and, and you're you're doing pieces to already curated pieces of art or yeah. music or choreographed dances, whereas this is something that you create. Yeah, it's our own work. Our best friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We plugged it ourselves. We did like the like advertising we sold it. Like even like from the small things that you don't even think of, but like like getting up on event price and like make like selling the tickets that way and stuff and. And it was afterwards then because it's actually a really nice theatre. So like the the bar outside is like really lovely. And everyone kind of hung on. We were just kind of, we knew no one, but we were going out, everyone was buying us drinks and we were just shite talking the ears off everyone for the night. Like the next day, like I had no voice. I was literally like fucked or whatever. But my brother had come over. He actually, not that he had time to come over and see the show. He was over with work. So he had been at it as well. And I think he was a bit like, well, Jesus Christ, look at the lads, like after pulling the crowd for themselves for this you know, show that they've like done on their own. So that was definitely like for me, I think PJ would probably be in agreement that that was like, we still look back at that. And like, again, even when we did the shows in Dublin and Cork, we were like, you know what I mean? It's kind of mad it's, buzz. It's, yeah. It's, it's, so so it's, it's, you don't believe it. Like you can't, yeah. it's, it's hard to, because you, you obviously, you know, from podcasts and anyone, like same as myself, you have the analytics behind yeah. the, 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 you know, the platforms or the Acast or whatever you upload your podcast to, but to have it in person, there's a complete different aspect because I've done live things before, not with the podcast, but I've done live things before. And even when you do live things, as you know, as you said, see the performer, it's just, it's different. It's a different feel. It's, yeah, it's completely it's, different. It's, it's, whether it's, I mean, there's there's no doubt in my mind that you're only going to grow from here. I mean, from going to, you know, Cork's hottest exports to to Ireland's top best comedy duo, like there is just... The, the, ah. And do you know what you should do? You, I, I, I'm i going to finish on this terrible joke. You should set up a cruise, but just for ye, so people come on and it's just six months going to Southeast Asia of I'm Grandma. I'm sure. We're going to have to edit this bit out because that, it's in the pipeline. 
I mean, we planned this already. We were, just... we're actually thinking of different ports just because I've done like Asia. I've been there, done that. Okay. I, was thinking, I was thinking more Mediterranean, Caribbean. It's just a massive pink ship, which is the year logo on the side. Of, yeah, just big yeah. ship. Now, yeah, from a health and safety perspective, we'd be fucked. That's the only thing. I mean, we'd have to, I suppose we'd have to employ a few people who knew their stuff, but. Uh, it's just the like Dewey, the... it's the Dewey steering. Can you imagine these sailor hats. You don't even go into the captain's deck once. You don't get an no, ice burger or something. Just on the stage five nights a week. Oh, uh, Kevin, look, thank you very much for, for taking Not the at time. All. And thank you very much for joining me. It was an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. A delight to have you on. Uh, if for those who don't, but definitely do know who you are, where would you direct them to first? So um, on Spotify, I suppose, or wherever get, you get your podcast from, search I'm Grandmam. Um, on Instagram and Twitter, our handle is at I'm Grandmam. That's I-M-G-R-A-N-D-M-A-M for, for the um, international listeners amongst us. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I do hope you have a great week. Um, be sure to join us next week. Until then, you can get in touch with Podge at podcast.ie or Podge Henry on all social channels. For myself here and Kev and Shane in Collaborative Studios, thank you very much and talk to you next week. Bye, take care. Thanks, Podge.